So you've just had your SunGrow solar inverter installed and you chose to spend a little bit more on this little gadget here called the SunGrow Energy Meter or the SunGrow Smart Meter or the SunGrow Consumption Monitor or whatever you want to call this little gadget here. First, you're going to want to know whether it was worthwhile spending that extra couple of hundred bucks or so on that device. And you're going to want to know whether your solar system is producing as you were promised on the day of sale. So this video is going to take you through the SunGrow monitoring platform called iSolarCloud. And we'll talk about some updates that are coming to the platform. If you didn't purchase the SunGrow energy meter, don't worry, I've shot an earlier video. If you just jump onto my channel and you can see a more basic overview of iSolarCloud. But for now, let's just jump in. So the first thing you're going to want to do is jump into isolarcloud.com. And if any decent installer would have connected your inverter to your home Wi-Fi network on the day of install, and they would have then gone back to the office and registered an account for you. So if you're our customer, just type in the email address that you provided for us. And instead of using the password we sent out to you, just click on forgot my password and reset your password just for a bit more security there. But if your installer did not set up your uh, iSolar Cloud account or connected to Wi-Fi, first thing you're going to want to do is follow this link up here, this little video that shows you how to connect your inverter to your home Wi-Fi network, and then click on this register button and set up an account for, for yourself. But once you've done that and you've logged in, the first thing you're going to want to look at is if it's during the daytime, you'll have this tick around the circle in the green circle that says your system is still connected to your home Wi-Fi network. From time to time that might drop out or if you change to NBN or change your modem or anything like that. So go to that same link up here and it will show you how to reconnect your inverter to your Wi-Fi network. Okay, let's look into it. So at the moment we are on in midwinter and this is a six kilowatt system or six kilowatt of panels and at one o'clock in the afternoon it's only producing 3.81 kilowatts. As you'll see later, this is an east-west system, and that's what we expect in midwinter, is the system is never gonna produce anywhere near six kilowatts at lunchtime. Uh, so if you hover over here, you'll see a little bit of detail, MPPT1 and MPPT2, that's a little bit of tech information that helps uh, our installers, um, and it really is a breakdown of your inverter into two parts. And you can see later, this is an east-west setup. So MPPT1 is on one orientation, and MPPT2 are the panels on the other orientation. So if you look, this system, as I said, producing 3.8 kilowatts from the panels, but you've only got 3.4 kilowatts coming out of the inverter. That's because there's an efficiency loss within the inverter. And um, that's what we always expect. It's just interesting that SunGrow have shown us that efficiency loss. And you might be interested that when the system is running at its full capacity at five kilowatts, there's a lot less efficiency loss than there is if the system is running at say 500 watts or one kilowatt or something like that. So if you look a little bit further here, you can see that we're sending 3.16. So most of that power is back to the grid and a little bit is going to your house. Now, this is the benefit of your energy meter or your smart meter that we've been talking about. If you didn't have this energy meter, you won't see this division here and it'll look like you just are just sending 3.4 kilowatts back to the grid. So it's the job of this device to tell you which power is going to the inverter and which how much of the power is going to the house. So it has to be a separate device that is installed at your switchboard rather than at your inverter. Now, all the information that the inverter or the smart meter uh, collects with this will be really useful later on in graphing and charting. But let's scroll down and we'll look at the other information we've got here. And to explain this part, we're gonna have to go back to Electricity 101 and explain the difference between energy and power. So embarrassingly, this is something that so many people in the solar industry still don't get. So power, is what we are producing instantaneously. So 3.59 kilowatts is what this inverter is producing right now. So that'll go up and down and because we're past the afternoon, that'll go down to two and one and, and turn off at uh, five o'clock at night to zero kilowatts. So kilowatts is instantaneous power. Now, if we had 3.59 kilowatts running for the next hour, this system would produce 3.59 kilowatt hours in that period of time. The monthly yield for this system is 478 kilowatt hours. So that's the difference between the power on our left hand side and the energy 
which is in the middle here of the hour factor, which includes the time. So if we go over to our total yield, megawatt hours, 2.57 megawatt hours this system has produced in its lifetime, which is basically since January 2020. Uh, and that is 2,570 kilowatt hours. Um, you can translate it to, and that's what the system has produced in its lifetime. If we look down here at the revenue portion, and this system has apparently saved the customer $805 in the time that it has been installed. Now, that isn't necessarily going to be accurate unless you're really diligent with your system. Um, so if we look over here on plant, if we go to plant configuration and tariff, you can enter the details of your feed-in tariff. So, and you press save there and that will update. Now, the problem with the SunGrow monitoring platform currently is that you can't go and retrospectively change that. So if your power price hiked up six months ago or in July last year, and you forgot to go in here and set this on July the 1st, then you're, you can't retrospectively change that data as you can on some other monitoring platforms. But SunGrow have told me that's one of the fixes that they want to upgrade uh, by the end of 2020. So jump back in at the end of 2020 for your system and you should be able to retrospectively update all of your tariffs so that you can really see. It's a really handy tool to have so you can see how much this system has saved you. And once you hit that, you know, six or seven or eight grand or whatever you paid for your system, you know you've paid your system off. So a really handy tool for you to have. Um, now let's scroll down further on the page. And this, these charts here are something that you will not get if you don't have the energy meter. So this is uh, another view that you can get because you purchased the energy meter. And it's kind of helpful to see how much of that solar power you are using. So PV is just a fancy um, word that we use in the industry for solar. So photovoltaic is just your solar power. And the self-consumption is the, much, the amount of solar power that you produced and you used within the house. So you can see today, this system has only produced 3.5 kilowatt hours or 19.7% of that energy. And the other 80% of power was fed back into the grid, the 14.2 kilowatt hours. If we go into total for this system, which has only been installed in January, um, the customer has used 30% of the solar power they are producing. So load over here, this is how much uh, power is being consumed by your house, whether it is your solar power or whether it is the power from the grid if, uh, at night time or if you don't have enough power during the day. So self-sufficiency is of course, the it means the solar power that you have produced and used by yourself. So this customer is 43% self-sufficient. So pretty much they're covering all of their daytime usage, I would guess, and then 56% of their power uh, is consumed at night time uh, is probably the case here or maybe they've got more load on the weekend and that they're using it during the day. So that's a really handy overview to see how uh, well you are consuming and how well you're using your solar system. Now if we scroll down a little bit further and we'll go back to day because that's the default view that you get with this system. Um, you can see a really confusing looking graph down here. Now to simplify it just click out a couple of the, the grid, uh, which is how much power you're using from the grid and click out of load. And you can see a graph here. And this is what the system has produced today. Now, here's another little glitch that I'm hoping SunGrow is gonna fix up or giving them feedback. If you click back here, though that grid and load just pops up again. So we've gone back to yesterday's chart and we just have to take that away again. So you can see a perfect production curve here. So you really want to go back, uh, one reason you want to use this day view is if you get a, a perfectly clear day uh, where there's no overcast, uh, no clouds or anything like that, um, you want to make sure that there's no tree shading that you weren't aware of. And you'll want to just check more importantly that at 10 o'clock or something every clear day that you're not having a real dip off in your power which might be from an overhanging tree or a stink pipe or, or some kind of shade that you can deal with without knocking down the neighbor's building. Um, so that's really uh, the, a good use of day. And again, you can just keep on clicking back. And I suggest you click back there and look at uh, a few good days we have. I know that, that back on the 25th, we had a clear day from other systems. And you can jump in there and see 
that we've had a clear day on the 25th and we take away the grid and the load and you can see that we had a clear day and we didn't have any real kind of shade issues kicking in there. These little glitches here are nothing much to be concerned about. But if you have a real drop off there, you're thinking, and, and it's happening every clear day, you're thinking you might want to try to deal with that. Um, so there's a whole lot of information you can get out of that. You can kind of understand um, where your power is going and, and how your energy habits um, uh, affecting your power bill. Now there's one thing that I need to address here is the nighttime consumption. So if we go onto our load, we can see that the load only starts when the solar power turns on. Now that's because this system doesn't have night mode turned on and by default SunGrow hasn't had night mode which means it is recording your energy consumption during the night. Now SunGrow have now done an update and we can get night, night mode turned on retrospectively to our inverters. So if you're our customer, give us a call uh, or give your other, whoever sold you the system a call and ask them to work out how to turn on night mode for you. Um, and once night mode is turned on, you'll then be able to see the power that you use at midnight and, and all during the night. Now, however, with the current inverter and until around about October in 2020, all the inverters that we install they will not run at night. So the inverter doesn't have a standby power. So it can't be sending power to your uh, home Wi-Fi and up onto iSolar Cloud. And you will not see this consumption, which would be from the grid at night time. You won't be able to see, ju jump in at 10 o'clock and see how much energy you are using. However, if we do turn night mode on for you, when you scroll down here, you'll see a 24 hour timeline and you'll see it won't update until midnight the next night, but that information will finally update to the internet and you'll be able to see how much energy you um, are consuming at midnight or at 10 o'clock at night. So it's a little bit of a glitch on the system now, but that is coming with the new SunGrow Premium update. As I said, for inverters that are installed sort of after October in 2020. So something to look forward to if you haven't had your system installed yet. But something to get updated if uh, you have a smart meter and you have an older model is that at least you can get that historical data of what your system is producing at night time, which I recommend everyone does. Okay, that's day view and that's not a really good way at looking whether your system is producing as it should as the customer has guaranteed you because well, quite often we get a call up and say in winter my inverter is only hitting three kilowatts or four kilowatts, or in this case, 3.8 kilowatts, and I think it's underperforming. Well, we can't tell you what the system should produce on a, on a winter's day or any particular day. Um, we tell you what the system should produce, most importantly, over a year, and a little bit less accurately, month to month, what the system should produce. So if we click into here, month, year, and total, we will have what the system has produced. Now, because energy, uh, smart meters have not been around for long, I don't have all the data in here. So we're just gonna flick over to another program or another system I have installed. And this is a system without a smart meter. As you can see there, we don't have all the data and we don't have those circular graphs here, but we um, do have a lot more historical data. So except for the fact that we don't have your en energy consumption on this graph, it's a lot more simple but let's look at how you can check that your solar system is producing as it should. So your solar installer really should have given you an estimate of what the system should have produced, should produce each year. So this is the way we do it. If you pull up uh, your original quote that we sent you, we would have sent you this near map and you can see this system, we installed this, the panels on the east and west and this is the design that we did at the time. And we put in all the data at the time we were selling Jinko panels and uh, it was 5.98 kilowatts of Jinko panels. And this system efficiency down there is uh, the real world conditions because panels don't work at 100% unless they, they are in a lab under perfect situations. But this accounts for cable losses and dirt and, a, and inverter efficiency losses and everything like that. And 82% is a fairly accurate figure. If you see this figure up above 90%, then they're kind of um, overestimating what the system should produce. Uh, now down here, we have got energy output each year and that energy output we estimated was going to be 8,246 uh, 8, kilowatt hours or 8.2 megawatt hours. 
And now if you remember, we'll go back there and this system always produced at least over 8.2 megawatt hours each year. Now, probably just as importantly is the system isn't degrading. Systems normally degrade by about 2% every year. But if you can see this going 8.4 and then 8.2 and then 8 and then uh, 7.8 and it's continually going down, then your panels are degrading a lot quicker than 2% or maybe your panels are getting really dirty or your system is getting really shady. So that's one thing that you should look out for. Now you can hone in a little bit further and if we go into year here and we're going to go back to 2019 and you can see this system in January produced a lot more. It gets down a lot less in June and July in the shorter days and the system is back up producing well in uh, December. So again, if we look onto our system, so in January, this system should have produced 941.6 kilowatt hours. And you can do this for all the months, but we'll just do it quickly here for January. So our system says on average per day. So that doesn't mean the system's gonna produce 28 kilowatt hours every day minimum. It says on an average day, it'll produce 28. Probably better said average per month. So if we go 28 times uh, 31 days in January, this system should have produced 868 kilowatt hours in a January. And if we look over here, it actually produced in this January 941 kilowatt hours. So it produced really well that January. And you can do the figures again for every month if you choose. We generally try to underestimate it a little bit. We don't want customers being disappointed uh, with their system production. But of course, we can't predict the future. We can't predict um, uh, a rainy uh, a rainy summer or a rainy winter. So this is a, a way to uh, keep an eye on the shade or, or the dirt or the degradation of your solar system, but also to hold your solar installer to account for what they promised you the solar system should be producing. Okay, so if you called us up and you said, well, in January and in July, my system is underproducing by 10% and it used to produce fine, but now it's really drastically dropped off its production. The first thing we would do is go into Curve over here. Now I'm just gonna jump into another system because it's gonna be a lot clearer to see this. Okay, this portal is a little bit more as, the, as you as a consumer will see it. So if you go down here to Curve and you click on Plant and Inverter and you choose, this is the SunGrow 5 kilowatt SG5K. Click on that and you can click on daily yield, total yield, uh, the voltage in A phase, let's get rid of total yield, That's, that makes it a little bit messy. Uh, the voltage in MPPT1, which is the voltage on those eastern panels, the voltage on those western panels. And that, that's kind of some of the information that we would want to jump into and, um, and to try to understand whether you're getting the correct voltage out of your panels. Some, some things that we can pick up here is faulty optimizers. If we put Tygo optimizers on the system, we can check that the system, what used to be producing at say 400 volts on one tracker, and it dropped down by 30 volts to uh, 370 volts. And we straight away pick then that we've got a problem with a tracker or potentially even a problem with a bypass diode on the panel, or we can pick up smash panels, we can pick up shade on, on one part of your system. You know, where, where is your system really suffering? We can hone into the two different aspects of your roof. Um, and there's a whole lot of information that we can pick up here. Now, if this video has helped you out at all, and if you found it useful, please give us a thumbs up. And if you wanna get a little bit more information, we're gonna keep on pumping out different videos about batteries and, and inverters. Uh, so uh, click on subscribe down below and hit that little bell so you get a notification every time we send out a video. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next video.